I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Senator Marco Rubio blasted China during Wednesday's Senate Intelligence Committee hearing. Rubio accused the country of waging, quote, an economic war against the United States. The Florida Republican continues to be an outspoken critic of China. Here's more from Senator Rubio. China's uh, plans and intentions behind closed doors, but the fact of the matter is that their ultimate goal and what they're trying to do is really not that big a secret. Um, they seek to displace the United States and to become the world's most dominant economic, industrial, technical, and military and geopolitical power. That, that's their goal. Uh, we, for in this country for a long time, had this hope for the better part of 20 years, this consensus really, that once the Chinese Communist Party in that country became rich, it would become more like us, move towards democracy, have respect for the rules of, of economic engagement and so forth. Well, obviously, that's not materialized. In fact, they've used the last 20 years to war, to, to wage an economic war against the United States, uh, stealing jobs, exploiting the free and open market, uh, oftentimes with help by American corporations driven by the short-term profits that can be gained uh, by having access to the Chinese market. And um, as part of that goal was to leave us, as Americans, economically dependent not just on their massive market, places you want to sell things, but supply chains as well. And we've seen that disruption play out during a pandemic. Uh, imagine in a time of conflict. And so w they know that once we are dependent on them, uh, our manufacturing base, our supply chains, critical minerals, and not to mention the dangling the, the promise of access to their massive market, well, then our options will be limited and their leverage will be extraordinary. And, and they've been able to achieve this uh, through their military civil fusion strategy, through their national laws that compel the transfer of sensitive information to the government. Um, and frankly, by weaponizing some of our companies against us here in the United States. In many cases, we find that it's American corporations uh, because they manufacture there or because they want to have access to their market that are then turned around and become advocates in favor of the Chinese position on any sort of different issues that we face here domestically. Um, you know, the intelligence community, I think at this point leaders on both sides of the aisle have, have been pretty clear that the, this is the single greatest challenge this nation has ever faced. We have never faced a near peer adversary with the, that poses such a comprehensive challenge the way the China does today. Soviet Union was a military and a geopolitical rival. They were never an industrial or technical or uh, commercial rival. China is all of that and more. And uh, as I said earlier, if, if we think having the supply chain disruptions as a result of a pandemic shutting down some factories has been bad for our economy, imagine it being shut down deliberately as leverage against us in a time of future conflict, because we, that's what we can expect to see, and it leaves us vulnerable and it's something we, we need to begin to address. So uh, I would make one final point, and then the two things I hope we can take from this hearing. I think this matters. Uh, because I think it matters if the most powerful, let me put it to you this way, if the most powerful and influential nation on earth is a dictatorship that is willing to enslave its own people in death camps and commit genocide against its population, if that's how they treat their own people, and that's the most powerful country in the world, that's not going to be a good world. And, and that is unfortunately what we're headed towards if we don't deal with that. And if anyone has any illusions about the nature of the Communist Party of China, ask the people of China and people living in places like Tibet and Hong Kong and Xinjiang, and they'll tell you what this government is capable of doing. In closing, what I hope we'll hear today are your views on China's economic and technological plan to dominate key technologies and control critical supply chains. And, uh, and, and it's also uh, perhaps as part of this hearing, we can begin to think more about how we can uh, dramatically increase our efforts to reduce our economic vulnerability to the Chinese Communist Party. So thank you for being here with us today. Well, again, I thank all the witnesses for being here. I'm not sure who's going to go first, so I'm going to throw it to the panel.